Thanks so much for doing this, by the way. Uh, I'm... Sorry, I'm fixing my hair. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what, what, what look are you going for? Like maximum coverage? Is that... Yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> maximum coverage. <laughs> <laughs> So you mentioned earlier that you like would like to close the universe. Yeah, mine is like I'm making this movie that kills my whole series so that I don't have to have to make anything for it again because I don't want to anymore. And the way that I'm doing it is I'm like I'm like making the story reflect me not wanting to do it anymore. So <laughs> it's like basically me sending like uh like an avatar like James Cameron avatar into my own mind to then destroy the universe from the inside kind of like Jesus but reverse I guess because <laughs> um, my my universe is based on misery and inflicting misery on like innocent creatures so the idea is that it existing it's a bad thing so then me destroying it would be the only way to help them but i like this kind of meta commentary on it like because I, i i relate to it that's why i got curious about it and i think it would be a good way to enter um yeah. because also when i started to think about like okay what is actually what is alp mm-hmm. um because at, uh, in the series they the characters kind of refer to it as this like mysterious party that controls everything and uh, at the same time it's a place where they can go like this virtual mountainscape um, where they can live forever basically um, and it uh, it's also kind of has a bit of like this religious flavor to it so I was also like I felt like oh like like it has to come from somewhere so I got the idea like oh it's aliens and they came from outside and implanted it into a story that was coherent and made sense initially <laughs> because they needed new fuel for their spaceship <laughs> they <laughs> came up with ALP and put that into my brain the creator's brain <laughs> in order to make the characters um, act in a certain way so that in, inside of the story a, a black hole would start to exist which they use for fuel like they can only exist in a dimension of stories that's amazing that's so cool yeah but that's that like yeah that's uh, that's like <laughs> that's what i like you know that's like a that's like a like a true story you know what i mean like it's like it's like a like there's like story but then that's like a real one where it's like actually happening yeah you know I mean? it's like actually it's like actually real yeah i, yeah. Like, I mean it's, that's I, like I, why i want to do code layers because it's like i want it to make something that's like actually real but then you don't think it's real but it actually really is yeah know? right because, like i don't know <laughs> so, so I, i felt like a similar um spirit i guess and what you explained yeah. earlier also with, with this like feeling of oh i need to um relieve them like i actually wish well for them and i yeah. wonder why do my characters always have to suffer i don't want that yeah. Like, is it yeah exactly mm. yeah like that's what <laughs> I've, been, i've been referring to mine as like a like a torture chamber where it's like they'll just like live to get tortured because it's like you think about what I'm actually doing which is like you know making these films for like emotional catharsis for myself and then other people who are watching or whatever but then you think about okay so I'm like inflicting all this like crazy stuff onto them so that they can like feel tortured <laughs> so that I can show it to people and then show it to myself <laughs> it's like a you, it's you like a like... really like like evil thing to do to them <laughs> right yeah but do you feel like this is something that um uh, like story in stories inherently ask for that like you need to have the suffering in order to have a story no or I, I, like in the way that i've been doing it like the way i started doing it and i think this is like the thing that i have like a reputation for now right is like making these like emotionally evocative like sad movies or whatever i don't know and then it's like you think about like around maybe that's not even true i don't know what my reputation is even like i don't know what people think <laughs> but i think i don't know what do you think you think they're sad you think they're sad actually i find them pretty wholesome uh yeah. like, I, like everyone is Damn it. like uh, like there are a lot of people are sad yes mm-hmm. but everyone's also acting in order to like improve their 
fate like it's not mm -hmm. just like things happening it's not like some sad japanese novel where everyone's just like, quietly suffering and eventually yeah. they die but it's like because you're acting by this thing when you say like oh like first make it true then make it funny yeah. so it is funny as well because they're animated and they're blinking like they're having a yeah. stroke all the time <laughs> <laughs> My character, I don't know if any, if you haven't seen my things, my characters blink like this for no reason. It's just because I'm insane and I have like a sick fi fixation on making heavy blinks. That's great. They're like, they really read, you know, like, yeah, you never they definitely them. read as blinks. That's for sure. They it's probably not, read like too well as blinks. You, you won't miss those. Yeah, yeah blink, blink and you don't miss it. Yeah, so aliens infiltrated your brain and made you make this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you like it? Did you like making it? Um, oh, like it had rough stretches. It was such a weird project because I, I'm actually not even from an animation school. I'm from a normal art school. Oh. Um, and I just how did you get? How did you start doing animation? I was on summer holiday. Um, and I did a semester in fine arts and I had like this whole identity crisis of like, why am I doing what I'm doing? I tried to do like etching and printing and stuff. And I just felt like, okay, I can't stop working, but I don't really know why. And eventually I just drew these characters and made like this experimental animation film of like, it was completely drawn on paper. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, like, I've, and I think I li listened to all of Jules Verne while, while doing it. I was like, oh, I can listen to books while I'm working. And like, <laughs> I just loved uh, the craft, I think. And I think I was just like sm smoking a lot of weed at the time. And I was like, oh, I don't, I'm kind of tired of watching something that's either like very, made for adults, but like just jokes or um that's like kind of ugly looking <laughs> mm -hmm. so I wanted to make an adult animation show and I was like I'm just going to make what I want to watch um but it's it was very difficult <laughs> but for oh. some reason I got funding for it like it was actually it was supposed to be a funding for startups because my hometown they're like really German and they're they really want to fund startups now. Uh, I just sold it as if it was like an interactive multimedia kind of project. And then I made a pilot. Oh, and then so you lied to them? Maybe let's talk about collaboration. Like I, what I just really love about the way you work is that you found a way, I don't know, like through flashbacks, through dream sequences, TV programs, etc., cetera, um, to let your collaborators be themselves. Mm -hmm. um is it like do you like when you write do you plan those things beforehand or uh um yeah i mean like so generally like the way i work is like um really instinctual you know um and again like i i have like a lot of beliefs about the animation process like specifically like that every single convention that exists is like fake and like made up and like not even like like the idea that there's rules to anything is really stupid to me um and like so I try to reflect that in pretty much every aspect of the process including the guest animation and the guest writers and everything where like um the way that I, like I put Essentia together for example was I had um like we, the way we wrote it was like um jenna caravello and and michelle ha uh we like uh would meet like every week but then the way that they would contribute to the writing was like very emotional and very like informing it in how they were reacting to what i would tell them or like how like you know so what ended up happening was like the story ended up having this like underlying feeling to it that was really influenced by it like how to like to them being there for writing it right so like and then also I don't know like I like the, that's kind of what I want usually is I I want to come up I want to, I want to find things in a way that's like natural like I, I was describing I was like I think the reason why my work works you know like why it like functions like why people like cry or whatever is because it's like everything I'm showing is like a discovery for the characters and a discovery in the situation right so it's like 
it doesn't feel contrived even though it is a lot of the time it is a lot of time it is very contrived but the way that it's being presented is just like a discover like an emotional discovery for the characters and so there's this like this um kind of like natural like even though it's all fake and whatever it's like there's this like natural kind of like essence to it right and that's kind of the the point of the movies is like the essence over everything else you know like, so like, like going. basically everything they experience is kind of an, uh, a metaphor for their inner journey right yeah, yeah 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 and so the essence of like i don't know like i those things is really important so like uh, with the guest animators it really de it depends on who it is obviously but generally those are like me dead like i cast them in my mind you know like me like i usually try to get the first person that i think of when i'm like thinking of a situation or something um <laughs> it's like, i don't know but it's like it's kind of like yeah like i i do have people who do like non-stylistic like they try to match the style or whatever like i had like maddie brewer and um Frankie Wish and a few other people, Sydney Gale, Benny Quintero, like a lot of them did stuff like that for Barber. But the thing about it that I wanted to make sure was that they weren't conforming that much. Like they were, you know, like I wanted to make sure that like you could tell that they were drawing it. Um, and the shots that they did all like look very specific, you know, so I, I am happy with that. But the, yeah, in general, it's like I get really excited by finding ways to make it make like like natural reasons for it to be there um like for the guest animation that has like a deviation in style or whatever like i get really excited about like having like a like a thematic reason for it to be like that um so yeah it's always like flashback or um story that a character is telling or like the change in perspective or whatever um or even in like essentia like i had sarah schmidt do a guest animation that was a part of the plot but it just did not look anything like the rest of the movie it was like animated completely differently and like it stands out in like a really cool way but then also it is distracting if you care about that um which i don't it's something i really like because it, it's actually funny how often i got this question when i told people that oh yeah i have like other animators working on my film now when i did alp and like so many people who like didn't work in animation asked me like oh but how do you make it so that the characters will look the same like won't it be confusing <laughs> for the audience yeah. um, and i think if you have a strong character design like you can stretch it so far and yeah. people will still be able to tell it apart you can do anything mm -hmm. you know what I mean? that's the thing is like people don't realize that you can jump so many steps of the process like so many steps of like because like we're, we live in like a we live in like a like a post like <laughs> we live in like such a, like a postmodern like like situation like as far as like art goes and that, i think it's a good thing and i think but i think what it means is that like we can leap over a bunch of the like contextual like bullshit that everybody thinks that you have to do like that disney was like disney was like we have to make sure everything looks exactly <laughs> the same but it's like you can actually totally just skip over it and people will still register it if you put in the work to make sure that they understand what's happening just by like being smart with like how you're putting it together you know <laughs> it's like it just like that's all you have to do really it's just like make sure that the way that it works like functions <laughs> in, the, in the way that makes it make sense and then it'll be fine <laughs> I feel like as long as you like follow a character, like you know, yeah. like you have this like basic requirement for a story that's normally like, oh, they they have something that they need to do. Yeah. Um, and you're like as an audience, you're like basically always in like caught in between this like yes and or no question, like are they gonna make it or are they not gonna make it? And that's no. how you get a dramaturgic arc. But, but that's what I that's what I mean for sure. It's like the feel it's the thing of like making those shifts feel like they're a part of it you know like it's like you have to you have to like work with the brain <laughs> kind of mm -hmm. but it's like there is like you can just kind of step over like a hundred years worth of work that's already been done for you like and then you think about like like babies right now like there's so many babies out there who like watch coco melon or whatever from like day it's one of their there, birth right? like is like they immediately start seeing animated images all the time so it's like they have like a bunch of work that's already been done 
for you inside their brain already that you can just use. <laughs> like there's always, I think there's always been audiences for abstract, strange or whatever, or things that deviate from the norm or whatever. I think there's always been an audience for it. Like Eternal Family is a good example of that. Kind of the character design and everything and even editing techniques, it sort of has a lot of parallels to writing and like writing. Mm -hmm basically it's pictographs like if you reduce it to like a like you know like to emoji and then you expand it again to like a character with like lots of um attributes about them like your characters for example like you can hardly mm. see the face like what like what at like what that attributes to that person immediately um whereas with a live action like with an act with an actress or actor like it would be more more hard to to convey mm -hmm. like all the subtlety yes you've seen okay i don't know if i should bring this up but have you seen the movie cloud atlas uh yes i have yeah it's this is the wachowski going. sisters movie so it's like it's problematic because they they um <laughs> they have different they are cat actors of different races playing different races but i think it's an interesting idea where they're basic they're having they're telling a story over like you know centuries or whatever where these characters are shifting their appearance and changing and like and being in different time periods and different locations or whatever um but they're telling like the same emotional story that is is resonating through each of these different places and then i think that's that's like a good example of this as well is that like that you can do so much with story and with presentation and how like because there's been just so much work has been done already for us but it's like that kind of storytelling to me I don't think would be possible unless we were in this like era right because it's like they are because they're reference that's a lot of the emotional work is done by them referencing other things and it's been criticized for that as well but I think it's an interesting thing at least to think about because it's like it's like it's like pointing at other things to imply the emotion of what they want to go for and then using that and then sticking the landing kind of, which is like a really interesting thing. Um, but I think it's, again, like something that can only really exist in like post-internet, post like <laughs> like meme culture, like post like tons and tons and tons of like hundred years worth of film already being made. Now, <laughs> you know, they it's like a thing that exists because it's, on top of the like on top being like propped up by other things but you can like think about that for your own work and I tell people this all the time where it's like you can think about that kind of situation for your own work where you can use other stuff that people recognize to prop yourself up and then like play with the fact that there's a bunch of stuff that's already just rattling around people's heads and then see what happens if you like use it <laughs> I remember when I like like when I had the first version of the script for ALP I, I was desperate for like any kind of feedback because it was the first time ever I had written a script mm. um, and then people were just like oh go ahead like this is good just make it and I was like, very very like frustrated yeah. um, there were like professors in art school and whatever um, and uh, eventually there was this one guy who like kind of trashed it he was like oh, this is uh -huh. like it's it it's this way like, I, I think he said something like oh this is way too realistic like animation should be something mm -hmm. fantastic like it should have way more fantastic <laughs> moments and um that was like the first time I got like a kind of constructive feedback but also he was like kind of hated it and I can it was totally like I didn't even like his <laughs> to that degree or something like that I don't know but like <laughs> I was really inexperienced then and um so I think my what I want to say is like how much feedback do you need when you write a script like how much do you care about if people understand your scripts and I don't need them to understand it but I need them to feel something and I need to understand what's making them react usually like does this does this like register to you because like now I'm starting to do more complicated stuff narratively where it's like really complex like it has a like the cone layer thing where it's like more like actually crazy ideas that are like crazy story structure or crazy whatever so now I kind of need more help and that's kind of the point that's also the point of doing the cone layers I want to do something that like actually is challenging <laughs> it's like if I keep doing the same thing I've been doing the same thing over and over with just like emotions and jokes and stuff right so it's like now I'm like 
like I need to do something that is actually really complicated <laughs> so that it can like be more of a challenge for me because like now it's too easy to <laughs> it's like too easy to make the stuff that I used to make or the stuff that I'm making right now or whatever it's like it's like too easy for me to make it so I need to like do something that I don't know how to make and then so now I have like um uh on the cone layer I have like a little story team right now who are helping me write it um or like do story process stuff for it similar to like ascension again it's not like writing but it's like it's like a process that's like um <laughs> that's like that's really emotional and intuitive but it's like hard to explain kind of but I have like Victoria Vincent um and the Kelly Ficara and Jennifer Nee um they're all gonna help me kind of do this like story process thing for it and I think that'll that's kind of the challenge is like you have to like get you have to help them understand what you're going for and when it's something that's like really crazy like oh this is like a <laughs> like a religious allegory or something you know it's like it's like not it's just like it has to be you have to be more careful with like explaining it and then you have to like be precise and you have to like explain it in a way that makes sense and then you have to have them understand it enough to be able to have ideas in the context right so it's like it's like a it becomes then like so it's, this is like an exciting project for me because it's like gonna be actually really hard to accomplish it you have something that you can build up on and then yeah. you know, add new challenges to it yeah it's definitely like it's like because it's like at this point because when I was starting it was really hard obviously like it was really hard to figure it out and then everyone was like you're never gonna do it you're never gonna be able to finish that it's too long like that was mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody was acting when I was in school you know and then now it's like okay no one no one doesn't believe me anymore I need to like do something that's like so crazy that people will start to deny me again because it seems impossible but I don't think that'll happen anyway because everybody believes in me and everyone's too nice to me now but when I was starting out everyone was really mean <laughs> it's, good, it's good to sometimes do something where you like you you might actually fail like I, I, yeah like it's it feels very exhilarating and it's kind of strange like I, I feel like there's not much room, especially in the way the industry works at the moment, mm -hmm. that when you're an artist and you're kind of like uh, encouraged, uh, to put it mildly, to kind of keep doing the same thing because people yeah. expect that of you and you kind of become a brand. Yeah. I heard about this thing once, I think it's in Korea, when like upcoming directors, they get like funding for their first three films so that the first two can like kind of suck so they <laughs> have like <laughs> that's cool and i, love I wish that, that happened here that'd be so cool right and it's, it's yeah. such a smart concept because you know they recognize talent but then they're also like appreciate the fact that you might go like you know be wrong yeah or something and um that's awesome like it's it's very visionary i i think um this way of working I think like in a society where you're like constantly always being uh, like you're kind of trained to always focus on the goal and the product of something. So mm -hmm. like it's kind of nice to also be focused on the progress in that way. Like it, it's a completely different yeah. way of thinking, I think. It's it's great. I'm glad to hear that you're finding something that like will challenge you also in the future. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I just kind of always want to feel like it's hard to do something or something, or there's something that I have to, like, I have to, like, overcome or something, because it's, like, otherwise, like, that's what it, all my projects have been so far, is me just trying to outdo myself over and over. It's, like, what Barber was, that's what, like, Essentia was, that's what my favorite party was, and then, so I think that's a part of, like, why I make art in general, is I want to think, and I want to feel something, and I want to, like, feel lost and I want to find something and I want to like you know so it's like I want to feel lost I want to find something that's kind of the biggest thing it's like yeah, I, I think like, that really comes across like this feeling of like also searching and finding yeah. stuff on the way like it does not at all feel like a formula which is yeah okay. no I, I hate formulas um, um what what do you what do you feel like is the takeaway of your project like what do you what do you feel like if someone watches it, what would you want them to like take away from it? I think it kind of, in a way, kind of did that to some people, which I'm glad about. Like, I think what I wanted with this project was just like showing all the stuff you can do with animation, like not like like as if I would have like really done something super 
new with it but like you can see, i think you can tell that i tried mm-hmm. <laughs> um and i think i just want people to feel like it, like it was fun to make it like i don't want things that i make to look like they're hard work <laughs> um you know like... i love that yeah no i agree <laughs> with that like it's like i don't when i when i make something i don't want people to be like oh my god i don't want like you know like when you watch like Richard Williams, like Thief and the Cobbler or something, like I like I, like I hate that. Like I don't want to like right? stress you can people feel out. Feel the back pain. I don't want yeah. that. Like I like uh, so like also my favorite projects are always these like forty eight hour films I do. Like I yeah, do one yeah. every year and uh, like always like comedy and I make like I love making the audience laugh and I love that my mom gets them. She's like not an artist at all and yeah. just like that. Like just um so i think with aop it was kind of like this feeling of just a feeling of liberty like like because the narrative doesn't really make any sense but like kind of anything can happen and i like to create that sort of space because i think that's what animation is really good at so like i had this friend uh she went to my private screening when i showed it to a bunch of filmmakers in berlin and she came to me afterwards and said that um, it made her motivated to make films again uh, because she had like been like, kind of stuck on a project, I think. Mm-hmm. And like, I, f- I think I that's kind of what I would like people to feel. Like, uh, not like, oh, wow, this is incredible. This must have been such hard work, but more like, I could do yeah. that better. I will <laughs> like when I I don't want people to like feel burdened by watching it in any way or like that like I don't know. You know, it's like you want people to like uh, like also make things, you know. Like I feel like that's like important like to think about. That's also like when I have guest animators or whatever, you know, like it's like the feeling that I want to how it isn't like because I want people to like labor for me or something it's because I want people to like be empowered to make something because I mm-hmm. believe in them as artists you know it's like a very like t- important thing to me I think because it's like it, like to me like the only thing I care about is other people's art <laughs> like I don't even care about mine that much but like I care about like other people's art a lot and I feel like it's important to yeah like make people feel like when they watch your thing that they want to make their own thing and then also mm-hmm. like with the guest animators or whatever, like make them feel like they're a part of the project and a part of like something bigger and then also feel inspired to like continue so congratulations <laughs> on a job well done <laughs> on your thank movie you. thank you congratulations on being on eternalfamily.com i hope we confused some people into like wanting to watch it now everybody well- go watch it well thank you so much for joining me for all this time and like it's such a huge pleasure uh, of of course like this i'm happy to do it i'm a big fan of your work i'm glad that you got to make this thing it's very exciting um everybody go watch it (laughs) see you later